Welcome to Guns and Gear Network, everyone. Appreciate you tuning in today. As promised, I told you I was working on a solar panel uh, off-grid setup for camping and just general preparedness and emergencies and things like that when I might want a power bank. And I was going to build a um, uh, basically a, a power uh, station for uh, that utilizes solar. And I've completed that now, and I've started using it over the last couple of days and testing it. And I just wanted to show you guys um, pretty simple and basic setup, and it's not all that expensive. And in the grand scheme of solar, that is, and you can set one of these up yourself. Um, it's essentially a solar generator, a DIY kind of thing. I wanted to kind of go over that with you. So, and I'll link back in the videos that I've already done. So I did one on the solar panel as far as uh, doing the um, stand for it to be able to set it up and move it to around locations for the maximum amount of sun exposure. And then I showed you the battery box uh, by Minkota that I had bought to actually uh, house everything and kind of work with it. So I'm gonna take this off the tripod and kind of walk around and show you a few things. And um, so you've got the solar panel itself. And what you're going to have, you're going to have two cables that come off of it, and then it plugs into your other cable that's then going to run all the way over to your solar power station. So let's take a look, and I'm going to show you the best I can how this thing was set up and everything was wired. So your solar cables from your solar panel are going to need to go into a control box. I wound up buying a Renogy uh, Voyager control box, or controller they call it, charge controller. And once you do that, um, you're going to have it plugged into that. And then you're going to have the charge controller going to the battery itself. Now, I'm going to unplug this up here, and I'll tell you about this here a little later. Uh, I was actually doing some testing on uh, CB setup. So, if you remember the box, I added this voltage meter up here, and it's hard to read. Let's see if I can get it to pick up in camera. It's currently reading 14.6 volts, and if you look, that's reading 14.7. It's, it's usually pretty calibrated between the two. 14.7, let's see if we can get a look. 14.6, uh, that's the first time I've actually seen it where it was a little bit off, but it normally is correct. Then you have the battery box itself, and then I bought this Harbor Freight Inverter. Now, this is a modified sine wave uh, um, uh, inverter. However, uh, pure sine wave is the best way to go. Uh, but I wanted something, I'm going to get a pure sine wave, but I wanted something that I could just attach to the box. Everything you see here, I just used heavy duty, heavy duty Velcro to attach it. So let's take the cover off, and I'll show you how everything's attached and hooked up. It, this right here is actually to, once I roll, because the uh, cables running to the solar panel actually say attached to this uh, charge controller. So I roll them up and I hang them in here and secure them. So that, if you see that, that does not come with the box. That's one of the quick fist uh, holders there. So let's take a look and I'll kind of go over everything because this was a little confusing to myself and others, I am sure, uh, exactly how you hook it up and what you hook up. So these two wires here, you have a positive going to the positive terminal, and then it actually, here's the negative going over to the negative terminal. This is the charge controller coming to the battery itself here. And if you notice, I've got a inline fuse for it. Then you see these two heavy duty wires. So one of them kind of snakes around like this and curls around. That's just so it'll fit in the box good. That is the inverter. So here's the negative from the inverter attached here. And then over here, follow this one over and there, right here, all the way over. There is your actual uh, positive that's hooked up. Then these wires you see up here, uh, let's see here, this, these little wires, right there, those going to the positive and negative, that is the voltmeter that you've seen up there. And then you have these uh, big cables here that are attached, and that is to go to the power station that's built in up here as far as all your hookups. So, that actually is what hooks the battery up to the system itself. And you can also, 
hook uh, attachments up to the outside also. But I think that goes over it, and I'll briefly go over it real quick. So these two big cables here going is for the inverter. And what I did was on this Harbor Freight, it comes with alligator clips. So I just cut those off and I used the ring style and just attached those, uh, just crimping. I didn't do any soldering, or anything like that. Uh, so I crimped those on. So you have the inverter attached to the battery. Then you have the battery itself, these bigger cables attached to the system. Then you have the charge controller, which is here and then the negative here. And then you have the volt, extra voltmeter that I added, this there, that's this little red wire here, and then the positive wire here. And then you come down, then you're going to have two wires that actually go to the solar panel unit that goes all the way out there. Now, because it's two separate wires, I went up zip tying mine all the way up. The reason I did that is because A, I don't want two wires dangling around. I didn't see no reason for that. And also when I roll it up, it actually stays better um, uniformed. Uh, it's, it's nothing, it doesn't get kinked and kind of curly and all that stuff. So it's better to me if I do that. Now I'll show you a couple things I did. Because this is a stress point of where this attaches to your charge controller, I took two holes on either side and I put a zip tie to kind of secure this wire so it doesn't pull out from here. I also did that right here, if you look. So it'll stay right here. And the reason I did that is because, you see this, this is supposed to be a vent right here. So the wires go up into that hole area, that void on either side, just like that. But pretty simple setup, guys. Uh, pretty impressed with it. Uh, then if you look, this light here is glowing. And that indicates to me that the charge controller is accepting charge from the solar panel itself. And it uh, gets to a certain level and then it'll stop. It'll show that it's full and it will not take any more charge. That's what a charge controller does. It helps uh, monitor all that. So it shows me this in blue, and I'll go over and I'll do a separate review of this uh, uh, Renogy uh, charge controller at a later date. But I just kind of want to give you an overview of what you can build just like that to the solar panel. And this right here should be able to run a lot of electronics. Uh, because this setup has two 12 volts here and here, uh, that's why I was showing you uh, earlier that I had mentioned, I was testing out I have since, and I'll do a review about this or a video, I have hooked up a CB radio to my overlanding trailer. So there you go. So it just plugs in there like that. So I try utilizing as much 12 volt capacity as you can, uh, whether it be a 12 volt fan or electronics and things. Try using your 12 volt as much as possible with something like this. But anyway guys, hope that was helpful. I uh, just wanted to kind of show you what you can do uh, with a system. Kind of give you a look from both sides and uh, so forth but uh, anyway it's been a fun little project and if you have any questions post those below i'll try my best to answer them uh, and the reason i say that is because i'm fairly new to solar and i'm just learning i've got a good friend of mine that's researched this a lot and has been really helpful with everything trying to uh, show me how this all works but anyway guys hope it was helpful and uh, uh, if you get a chance build you something like this i think it'll come in handy whether it be camping just general preparedness if you have uh, a grid down situation you'll at least be able to keep some electronics and some things uh, going i had a box fan hooked up uh, earlier to it just testing it out because uh, a lot of times you know you might want a fan or something to uh, stir some air like in camping or something and a good fan would do something like that but anyway guys appreciate you tuning in if you got any questions post those below if you like our videos give us a thumbs up it's down there also down there is the share button share content helps us get the word out about guns and gear network and as always like share and subscribe bring another video shortly have a great day guys